The temporary and complex nature of foster care places special demands on foster parents. They become part of a team effort to support the child, which also involves working with the biological parents, the courts, and social services agencies and other agencies involved in the process. Norfolk's Family Services team touches the lives of hundreds of foster children and the people who love and care about them. Camille Campos-Wilson and LaCora Harris are two members of our team and really proud to have you on and to talk about the work you do and the people that you are always working with, which isn't necessarily just one another. Um, <laughs> Big part of what you do is outreach and getting people to yeah. consider foster parenting. It's a very important role and and it's needed. Yes. yes. So we need foster parents all the time. Why all is that? Time. Um, well, because a lot of things happen mm -hmm. with foster care. So you have homes that are open and when children are being adopted, then those homes mm -hmm. have to close. Mm -hmm. um, when children are coming into care, they may have different needs. So you need homes that are tailored specifically for the needs of children. Mm -hmm. um, maybe s even just sibling groups might cause a problem for the current foster homes that we yes. have now. Okay. People that are considering foster parenting um, certainly um, may come into this not realizing that there are uh, established criteria that they have to follow in order to really be eligible to qualify for this and screening is certainly one yes. big big part of it and um, but also how size I mean people may think oh you know I could probably handle two kids but you have to have enough bedrooms for instance yes yes um, it's not like getting your neighbor's kids or your somebody a relative's children you do have to have adequate spacing for each child. So each child needs their own bed. Mm -hmm. um, if they're of different gender, they need their se they need separate rooms mm -hmm. so that they're provided their own privacy. Uh, so yeah, there, there are different stipulations for foster children than there are for dealing with your own family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and Camille Campos Wilson is uh, the person who answers the phone when you call yeah. to inquire <laughs> yeah. about it. And I thought we'd get this um, out up front and that we do have information sessions for people who are interested in foster parenting and want to learn more. And there is one coming up. And can you tell us when that is? The next informational session is July 9th at 9 a.m. And they can contact me. Okay to RSVP for it. Okay, and we'll have that number up on the screen throughout the interview, so you'll be able to write it down, 664-7722. And that is Camille's number, and, um, and if she's not there, leave a message and she will get back to you. Yes. You can also go online to norfolk.gov slash foster to adopt, and uh, you will find information there as well as the contact information we're providing you here um, to help you um, move forward on this, yes. because it's an extremely important thing to do. Yes. Now, foster parenting is and outreach is a big part of what you do, and, and this just happened recently mm -hmm. um, at Harbor Park. And this was Father's Day that mm -hmm. there was an event um, that uh, the Virginia Department of Social Services and uh, the Tides, Norfolk Tides and Human Services in Norfolk all kind of came together and, and um, encouraged people to consider foster mm -hmm. parenting. So you did get some people that came by. Yes, we yes. got a few inquiries. And we have a few pictures mm -hmm. to show you of um, the, the event and we had a, a crew of people with human services <laughs> who, who showed up um, and were on the main concourse. There they are. Um, and uh, people came by and could chat and take freebies, which is always a nice thing at a baseball game. It was a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. You did get some people who were interested in signing up. And of course, the couple that we're showing now is uh, they're very active foster parents, Audra Bullock and mm -hmm. Richard Litton have yes. um, become foster parents for the city of Norfolk and are very supportive. Lots of people showed up for a great game. And uh, we also had um, certainly Richard, who was the one who threw the first pitch. So this was a nice way to get the word out about, you know, he is a foster parent and um, he's proud of it. Mm -hmm. And so is his wife, Audra. And uh, so, he, and of course we can't get away with just saying he threw the piss first pitch. We're gonna show it to you because the Tides were kind enough to give us that. So Richard Litton, um, representing the Norfolk Department of Human Services, threw the first pitch and uh, got to meet uh, Audrey Perez, who is the catcher. And the rest of the game was great because we had double plays and grand slams <laughs> yes, and yes. they won and it was against uh, Durham. So if you're for Durham, sorry guys, but the Tides <laughs> were winners. So everybody was a winner in this game. So 
with all of that aside, it's always nice to have these fun events uh, to take uh, take place and get people involved. But what it is you do on a daily basis isn't always fun, but it's incredibly important. It is. So what is a role as a family services worker you um, are dealing with people as they are sort of coming through the door? Correct. As also when the children are coming into care. Correct. Yes, as a family service worker, um, I engage the biological families as well as the children and the foster families. So <coughs> it is a, um, it can be strenuous, it can be stressful, but it's rewarding when everybody's able to come together and really focus on being a team. Mm. Um, children, don't, our goal is to have them return home in the, in the first 12 months. Um, so we definitely focus on working with the foster families and identifying any needs that the children might have mm -hmm. up front as well as kind of building a relationship between the foster families and the bio families because a lot of times our biological families really need support and uh, we find that as difficult as it is for the children to have to come into care it's almost as difficult for them to leave because they make a bond with the foster families as well so certainly when we can make um, a relationship or create a relationship and a bond between the families that child um, their well-being is more looked after when we can do it that way so, so when a child comes into care that first goal then is to reunify them with the family yes. but the family may need some help and resources mm -hmm. and work and and uh, support in order to kind of get themselves mm -hmm. back Stabilized. on track yes. so the child can come back home correct um, and that for the foster parent makes their role extremely important because they're there to survive you know survive the, the nurturing and the support not only for the child but that relationship yes. building yes and a huge component of that is that relationship which is going on during the time the child's in care, but also can continue afterwards. It can, mm -hmm. it can. That's also a, um, one of the key components is lifelong, last, long-lasting relationships. Mm -hmm. So um, that should not just be considered with a school teacher. Um, it is the foster parents too. If they go home, that you have made an impact in this child's life, and I, it's my hope that um, you don't see that as temporary. Um, there may be a need, and it doesn't necessarily require that family have to re-enter our system, mm -hmm. but certainly the support of a family um, who has had interaction with their children is much better than having that child have to come back into foster care. Well, I think that the myth of foster care sometimes is that children that are in foster care are not wanted, yes. which is very, very wrong. It is yeah. very wrong. Mm -hmm. um, like I tell people, we don't have unwanted children. We just have unfound families. And that's why we're out here recruiting for foster parents yeah. and, and trying to get as many as we can and, and just find a family for a child. And a family that can address that child. Yes. 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 Every child is different. Every child yes. is different. Mm -hmm. And every family can offer maybe something a little different. Yes. yes. And I, I think it's also important that people know that um, it's not just about you having to necessarily be a foster parent. Um, being mm -hmm. a part of our informational sessions and just letting us know your interest, um, it's our goal to work with you to see if there are opportunities for you to provide maybe even respite. Maybe you're mm -hmm. a new person who might be interested but not necessarily sure. Um, you know, come out to those informational sessions and we're there to answer any questions. And our goal is to provide education and train our families um, to not just stick a child in the home and hope it works out. We really want the, the children's homes to be a match for the child. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, we do take all that into consideration. And certainly if you have interest in helping in the community, foster care is a way where you can be assistive to your community. Okay, great. So if you're interested in it in general, call Camille and she can hook you up with the right people. That information session, the next one again is on July 9th and it's yes. from 9 until 11. Yes. yes. And uh, if you call the number that we've been putting up on the screen, you can give them a call and um, find out what you need to do, mostly it's just need to be there yes, and yes. where to go mm -hmm. and um, and they can they can set you up. But <clears throat> would love to hear from you and the children certainly will benefit as will the families of those children. You are part of the family once you become a foster parent yes. or even a respite care foster parent, which is a great way to get into it without that full time commitment. So we um, appreciate you sharing what you could because we're just scratching the surface <laughs> but that's the idea yes. give them a call get a little more involved and uh, you will be able to meet LaCora Harris and Camille Campos Wilson and uh, a lot of other
tremendously wonderful people yes. who work in our Family Services Unit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, enrolling in Medicare, free counseling is available. We'll have details when we come back.